One Piece Chapter 913, titled Suru Repays a Favor. So, we continue on with the Alumbus cover story that sees him leaving behind the village that he provided food and supplies to. However, because of this fact, Orlumbus kind of feels like he failed as a pirate. You know, he did the exact opposite of what pirates normally do. Whereas most pirates would pillage, plunder, and take everything from a village, he gave them food, supplies, and things to get by. So, Orlumbus is a big softie at heart at the end of the day, which, which is very cute. I also have to wonder if that cover story is going somewhere, because it's just like... Why is this so long? It's so much longer than a normal cover story, so I feel like we're being set up for something. But we continue on with the showdown between Luffy and Zoro and Basil Hawkins. Um, and we find out his bounty is 320 million, which is the exact same bounty as Zoro. So, you know, you got that there. Um, though... Luffy has only left Basil behind in terms of a bounty because of all the crap they've pulled up until this point. Um, whereas Hawkins has just been kind of lying low under Kaido's shadow for a little bit. Um, and so the showdown begins and immediately Zoro notices Luffy's katana, which is a named sword, as mentioned previously. And Zoro's just like, uh, hey, L Luffy, let me, let me hold that sword. Let, let me hold that sword, bro. But Luffy's not having any of it. He's just like, no, I want to use the sword. I want to do things with the sword. And he even sends out a gum gum pistol, smacking someone with the the his fist and not the sword. So it's just like, what, what's even the point of you wielding this? You're just doing it just because. So, um... Zoro is less than happy with the way Luffy is going on about using this sword, which is obviously cursed. Um, you also have the scene of the lizard that one of the uh, dudes is riding on trying to bite at Luffy, only for Luffy to just pick it up and chuck it. But the poor thing gets stabbed with the Basil, Basil Hawkins' sword, which is this long, curvy, you know, weird spindly blade that's called like a so draw helping hand sword. It's some kind of traditional Japanese sword that's all kind of weird and gnarly looking. And Luffy kind of feels a little bad because he's just like, oh man, he killed it. However, while um, Basil is kind of still stabbing into the beast, Zoro takes this opportunity to take a swing at Basil. And Basil gets cut in the face, only for that, you know, damage to be transferred on to one of the men he's with. Um, several of these men that he's with look like samurais and uh, Kaido's regular men, so I, I don't think um, Basil actually feels anything for these people. A thing of note is that he never really used his power on his crew. It was just random people that he didn't know. So he, he's never been shown to be one to be cruel to his crew. Um, but the other dude gets hit with Zoro's attack and like he, he's probably dead. You know, he got a very savage blow to the face and I'm pretty sure he's dead. And a Basil pops out one of his straw dolls, much like we had seen on um, the Shipodi Archipelago, uh, Ar Archipelago, however you pronounce that. Uh, and then Basil, you know, turns his sword into this like um, the straw form that we originally saw Basil turn into, but now he's transferred that over to his sword. So uh, he's gotten some kind of upgraded ability. I don't know if this is awakening, but it's pretty sick looking. Like, and he just calls it a game. Um, yeah, it's his straw man. And he pulls out these, starts, you know, bringing out these tarot cards. However, one of the tarots is like this misfortunate turn on one of his subordinates. 
which destroys one of his straw dolls. So I guess, you know, that's another life he's unable to use. But why that guy turned on the other subordinate is kind of unknown. It's just like predictions are usually supposed to tell you what's about to happen, but this feels like it dictated what happened. So very odd in terms of Basil's actually abilities. However, before the fight can, can really continue, the lion dog picks up both Zoro and Luffy because, you know, Tama is still in rough shape. She She's, you know, getting like this crazy fever. Um, but the Straw Dolls continues to pursue them. Uh, Basil per pulls out the reverse Hierophant, which is like the card of retribution, he says. So it starts following them and starts taking these swings at them. You know, and it starts to kind of push Zoro back a bit. So you know it's a very powerful ability. And it sends out all these needles and... You know, naturally, Luffy shields Tama and Zoro shields Luffy. So Zoro ends up taking the brunt of all the needle fire. He retaliates and sends out a powerful slash that cuts the beast in twain, you know, in the olden speak. And this is shown to affect Basil as well. So this creature is d tied in... Uh, directly with Basil and his abilities uh, and any th harm that befalls this creature befalls Basil but naturally Basil sends out another straw doll and you know the injury is placed on another person serving under him um, one of the men note that the straw hats are managing to escape and he tells them uh, you know don't pursue he's pulled out the hierophant um, but it's a regular hierophant, as in it means this time around someone will be aiding them. And as you know, Zoro and Luffy travel along with the lion dog, the woman that Zoro rescued previously reveals herself, and her name is Suryu. And she looks like very traditional Japanese, old time Japanese painting of women. You know, she, she's got this just design that's very simple yet elegant. And, you know, Suryu is Crane. And there's a story about this Crane who repaid a debt to a couple who helped her. So naturally, Suryu uh, wishes to repay Zoro's favor of saving her. And she even reveals that she knows Tama personally. And... Figures out that Tama probably drank the poisonous river water and offers to bring them back to her tea house to, you know, cure Tama and treat Zoro's wounds because, you know, having several nails driven into your body is not fun. So naturally, they, they don't pass up on this opportunity. And we even see um, her tea house, which in, in, in Kuri, uh, which is a rundown town. Um, and the tea shop, you know, is in this barren wasteland where, you know, the food is really pretty much just leftovers. And one of the waitresses at the tea shop is being hit on by this uh, Yokozuna, which is a, you know, top tier uh, sumo wrestler, I believe. And he's trying to get this young girl to marry her him. Um, we're introduced to Saku, who looks very similar to um, a character that was shown in a, you know, special pro promotional thing in Kyoto, where we had this story of um, this uh, daughter of a daimyo, who is, you know, a leader of the village under the emperor, and how, you know, he was struck down by this man who wanted to marry his daughter and become the new daimyo, and then this, you know, kind of street urchin-like guy who had the power to turn into... I forget what it was called, this kind of chimera-like creature. You know, it was just this love story that was set up in Kyoto, and she looks very similar. It's not just Oda's art, but, you know, she looks dead on too close for it not to be. So I wonder if that Kyoto story is going to tie into this. Um, and so... You know, he's the Yokozuna who's hitting on this young girl is kind of um, brushed aside by her. You know, she says that she doesn't really want anything to really do with them. They come from different worlds. You know, 
it feels like she's very much a high class young lady so i feel like that might be the case and so uh suru comes in with the lion dog and she tells um tama uh tells the young girl to uh s tell saku to start preparing a remedy in order to cure tama and in from the distance we can see the members of the heart pirates um namely penguin sachi and beppo watching from afar and seeing that the straw hats have arrived uh where law is i don't know but you know it's good to at least know that the heart pirates are in fact on wano so Man, a lot of things are just moving right along in this story. You know, the, the Oda is wasting no time just setting up, setting up, setting up. And, you know, it's only going to grow further from here. One thing of note is the fact that, you know, Hawkins is only working with Kaido's men. And it feels very much like a law punk hazard situation where he's just giving off the vibe that he's, you know working under Kaido where he's actually not I feel like that's very much the direction they're going in because there's something about the way Basil is going about things and doing things that just don't add up to him really just being all about that Kaido life but you know that's the chapter tell me your thoughts in the comments below do you, what do you think about hawkins and his powers how they've apparently grown over the two-year time skip um do you think luffy will continue to hold on to that name sword with uh zoro just being like hey let me see that sword hey bro let me see that sword <laughs> which you which would be hilarious and um do you think uh, Saku is actually part of that Kyoto story actually being brought over into the actual story? You know, read up on that. That is a very interesting, like, these traditionally drawn, like, um, you know, old-timey uh, paintings done for the one done for one piece so I'm, I'm very interested in people's comments on that but you know that's all i have for this episode leave me a like if you liked what i had to say about it or a dislike if you didn't and subscribe for more one piece because we are going a full throttle through one piece through wano full throttle through wano that's what i meant to say <laughs> bye